fantastic that you're here. Yeah, this is my last video of the playlist about algebraic fractions. And I have explained to you, first of all, how you can combine those types of fractions. And now uh, we are still simplifying algebraic fractions. Yeah? So these are the last two example questions. And simplifying fractions, I've explained, is taking out and getting rid of that highest common factor. And I have an x, an x, an x, but the 9 doesn't have an x, yeah? So I cannot just get rid of an x. But trust me, your examiner, uh, the guy who made your paper or wrote your book, didn't make a silly mistake. No, you should be telling yourself, oh yeah, hang on a minute. Whenever I have these types of questions, especially with quadratics, I have to factorize it, yeah? I have to factorize the numerator if I can, I have to factorize the denominator if I can, and then look for a highest common factor. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. Perhaps you want to pause the video now and try it yourself first, uh, because it's always better to do work yourself, be wrong, yeah? Making mistakes is part of life, it's part of learning, yeah, that's what you should be doing. But anyway, I'll leave it up to you. You're old enough to make a decision. Numerator, how can I factorize it? Well, let's get rid of that highest common factor, x first, and then I have x plus three. And please, I, in a different playlist, um, explain in a lot of detail uh, how to factorize these expressions, okay? So I'm going to go a little bit quick now. Uh, so check my other playlist, yeah? The denominator is difference of two squares, yeah? Very clearly, so that is x plus three, x minus 3. I'm, again, I'm going relatively quickly, but then I will always notice, and yes I do, now I have a common factor. Look at that x plus 3. Let's get rid of it. So my final answer, uh, let's continue in red, is going to be x in the numerator and then x minus 3 in the denominator. Fantastic. One more question, again, simplifying the algebraic fraction, which means get rid of the highest common Factor, excuse me, x is, but the 10 doesn't have an x, so I cannot just get rid of a 10, as I just explained in my previous video, but I have to factorize it. Yes, I do. And uh, factorizing is so important, and so please make sure you're comfortable with that. Please make sure, if you're not, that you check my other playlist about it, because I have a lot of, loads of example questions for you about factoring. Uh, the top one, the highest one factor. The lower one, I call that the normal one, yeah, because that's the most, the one you encounter a lot. Uh, let me put an x there and an x there. Multiply two numbers, I should get minus 10. And if I add those two numbers, I should get minus 3. Well, first of all, I know that one number must be positive, the other one negative, because my multiplication is minus 10. So a negative. Um, and then I'm just going to look for the combination. So uh, perhaps on a piece of paper, uh, you look at the factors of 10. Which two numbers multiply 10? Well, 1 and 10, of course. Can I turn it into a 3 if I add or subtract? No, I can't. 2 and 5. Well, with a 2 and a 5, I can make a 3 somehow. And because the addition is negative, that means that the larger number must be the negative 1 and a 2 there. Okay? But um, just check your work, yeah? That's what I'm still doing always. x squared minus 5x plus 2x. It's minus 3x, yes, 2 times minus 5 is minus 10. Fantastic. Oh yes, and of course, I notice I'm looking for that common factor, so that perhaps was a hint as well. Probably one of my brackets needs to be x minus 5, yeah, because that's what it's all about. Getting rid of the highest common factor when you are simplifying x over x plus 2. Fantastic. That was that. ExplainingMaths.com, guys, for more resources and like and share this video if it was useful, yeah? So I can help your friends too. That is uh, it for today. I wish you a very pleasant afternoon and I hope to see you later. Bye-bye.